first off, if you start with Battlefield 2, for instance, and looking at uh, the animation part of that, it's, it was very rudimentary what we had when it comes to technology and the kind of visual goal. And um, I mean, we were mainly focusing on how it looks from a first person perspective and like how the gun behaves when you're firing, when you're doing reloads. We did a lot of research when it comes to, you know, how do soldiers handle the weapons and so on. Uh, so I think compared to other games back in those days, we, we were in a quite good spot. And then um, I moved from that over to doing something totally new with the first person experience, which was, uh, which was uh, Mirror's Edge. And that was a kind of a big challenge for us because, you know, we wanted to, to move away from what we call to the gun experience uh, that we had in, in, in the Battlefield ga games and uh, focusing more on, on through, the, through, the, uh, through the character experience. Um, so what we find out while working on that project when it comes to animation was that you can't really just you know, use motion capture and slap a camera on, on the head of the, that character because what, what happens in real life when you run around and moving and so on is that your eyes are compensating for you know, how you perceive the world. So if you tilt your head and if you if you jump up and land, uh, the movement of the head there is not very useful for us. So wh what, we, what we needed to look into was what's actually happening uh, in your brain while doing those kind of moves. So we, we, we start to talk about animate perception instead of animate movement. Uh, and that was a actually big, big challenge for us. Uh, and nothing you can read about in, you know, animation books or uh, that's not nothing like that that they teach out in animation schools or anything so we we need to we needed to sit down and animate you know each and every move uh, one at a time until you know and iterate and iterate and iterate until we we, we kind of yeah this actually feels like you're doing this movement let's say on, on a parallel track we also had the bad company titles uh, that we worked on uh, so Th that, that was, you know, still a lot of focusing on, on through the gun experience, but we also wanted to tell a story. We also wanted to have the, you know, pretty strong characters as we ha had in those games. So we, we needed to focus a lot on, on their third person uh, movements in, in the cutscenes and so on. And of course we use motion capture for that and, um, uh, and we tried to, you know, crank it through Frostbite 1 engine, even though we had a lot of difficulty to reach the kind of level that we reached to. Uh, I, I'm very satisfied with the result we had in the bad company games, but um, uh, we, we felt that we we needed to, you know, combine the kind of story-driven thing we had in bad company and the kind of, you know, uh, realistic or very interesting movement we had in the first-person uh, experience in, in Mirror's Edge game in, into one single thing, and that's where I think we are today. Uh, so we found out that we couldn't use the technology we had in, in Mirror's Edge and we couldn't use the technology we had in Bad Company 2 because that was just such a pain to re uh, reach the result we wanted. I started to look around for other you know, animation systems that, that is out there, like Havoc Animation, like uh, Natural Motion. But also, uh, since DICE is a part of EA and we have a lot of you know, different parties going on there, I started to look um, inside EA and see, see what we had there. And quite naturally, I started looking into the sport games because what they have is animation. I mean, th that's what drives their games. It, it's a character moving on, on a soccer field or, or on a basket court. And it looks pretty good, I would say. There is basically a shelf where all the different game titles are working with Ant, which is currently all the sport titles. And we are the first, you know, games label product that are working with it. But all of us can, you know, program or code uh, different plugins uh, for Ant that everybody can use. So if we come up with a neat solution for something, well then FIFA can use that and vice versa. So it's a pretty powerful tool and um, the tool itself is uh, programmed now or it started up I think maybe seven, eight years ago uh, and there is 20 engineers working on it or programmers and, and plus all the sport games uh, they're working on it. And all of that knowledge is kind of combined into this, uh, into this tool, which we call Ant.